the first one's in our year. I don't know when our year's going to be. <laughs> this year or never. I, I want to thank Buckingham Voices for putting this together and all of you for coming out uh, in a um, or, you know, late uh, March evening uh, to hear us. How many are from the 10th Senate District? All right, good. So most of you. That's great. Well, I am Steve Sanasiro, and I am running for the Pennsylvania State Senate. And uh, my good friend Tina Davis just said, when I got to Harrisburg as a state rep in 2009, we had 104 members, and we had the majority. And when I left at the end of 2016, we were down to 82. Now, in that time, our friends on the other side were responsible for cutting school funding by a billion dollars a year, gutting funding for our state colleges and universities, as Brian said before, trying to stop the expansion of Medicaid, voting to let the National Rifle Association sue our towns if they tried to pass reasonable gun violence prevention legislation, and doing everything they could to put up barriers to women's health care, including the right to an abortion, if that's what they choose. That's their record. And you know what? The Republicans in Bucks County, many of whom our folks are running against, or whose seats they are seeking now, would come back to Bucks County and present themselves as moderates. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but what do they do when they get out to Harrisburg? They voted for all these things. And not only did they vote for these things, they voted for a leadership in the House and the Senate that pushed this agenda. So that's why it's so important that we win these seats, why Tina gets elected to the State Senate and I get elected to the State Senate or other candidates win as well. We have to create a new day here in Pennsylvania and throughout our country, and this indeed, this is the year to do it. We have that opportunity now. Tina talked about that difficult time that she and her husband Jim faced in 2008. I grew up the son of a school teacher back in the 60s and 70s when school teachers didn't make a lot of money. They don't make enough. <laughs> and let me tell you, my dad had to work two jobs to make ends meet. At night, he went out to work at the local J.C. Penney's in their hardware department. I, however, worked hard, and with his support and my mother's support, they made sure I was able to afford a college education. And that ultimately led to me going to law school. Don't hold that against me. <laughs> but that pulled me higher up. And as a former teacher, I can tell you, one of the most important things we have to do in this state and throughout our country is invest in the next generation by investing in education. Right. We absolutely need to do that. We do need to do something about the gun violence epidemic. When I was in the state house, I was the sponsor, I was the prime sponsor of the uh, background check bill and the no-fly, no-buy bill. I marched with those kids in Doylestown this past Saturday. How many of you were there? All right. We owe them, if not ourselves, we owe them to pass an assault weapons ban, to make sure that we have a gun violence restraining order law in place, to have full background checks, and all these other measures that are common sense and reasonable, and guess what? Most gun owners support. That's right. Yeah. That's right. It's time that we do this. It's sensible, and we can save lives, and we have no more excuses. These kids are our leaders in this. They are our moral authority. We need to follow them. <laughs> we do. We absolutely have to make sure that health care is available to everybody. We absolutely have to do that. And we know in Washington, they're going to, they're making an attempt, they didn't succeed last year, but they will continue to try to roll back the advances we've made. We Democrats at the state level have to keep fighting. I'll just end with this. Every year we go down to Bethany Beach in Delaware in the summertime, we rent a house with our neighbors. 
And this past August, we went down. My daughter Nancy got up early, and she went out, and she took a photo of the sun rising over the ocean at 6 o'clock in the morning. And I've kept that photo on all my computers. I love to look at it every day, because that photo of the sun rising over the ocean is a photo of hope, of a new day that's dawning. It's easy to be pessimistic, especially with the news that we're, we're confronted with every day. Don't be. There is hope. We can together create that new day of hope for our state and our country. I ask you to join all of these candidates, all of us tonight, in doing just that. Mm -hmm. We can do it, and we will do it. Thank you very much.